Thank you for joining me in the barn. My name is Joanne Knight. I'm doing what I always do today, and that is start with my standalone in planning a quilt. And I got to thinking about it and thought I would share with you how I import an image and how I audition some patterns on that image. I've got Creative Studio open. I'm going to go up to File, and I'm going to go down to Import Image, and you can see that Control-I is your shortcut on that and I'm going to left click with my mouse and that brings me up to the stock images that were loaded into Creative Studio version 6. I'm going to navigate over to my desktop and you can see that right here and on my desktop I have a file folder where I was teaching recently and in that file folder I'm going to look for a quilt block and image and right here I have a folder that says blocks so I'm going to double click on that and you can see all of the different blocks that I used in that quilt so I'm just going to choose this one right here that says log cabin I can only bring in one image at a time it doesn't do me any good to hold down the control key and select another image because it's going to only highlight one of those. So I'm just going to click on open. An image is going to create a new quilt group just like Border Corner does and just like Edge to Edge does and it's always going to bring it in on the point of origin. You cannot size this image in Creative Studio. I can hit F3 on my keyboard and I can make it not so bright so that I can see the patterns a little bit better and I can even take it down until it looks like it disappears but it's actually still there so I'm going to hit the little X and close that out if an image comes in rotated and it did that for me several times until I figured out a little trick what you want to do there is not in Creative Studio, but in your Windows program for photos. If I go back to that folder and I go back to these blocks, if I select that image and I right click on it and I am not in Creative Studio, I am in my file explorer and I go to open with right here you see where it says photos right here that's what a windows computer will do if i will go to photos and open that picture in photos and go right here to edit if i just make some slight little edit it doesn't have to be very much but just some tiny little edit on that and then I tell it to save a copy and then bring that image back into Creative Studio, it will turn it the correct direction, even though it looks like that it is correct whenever you look at the picture. Sometimes Creative Studio will rotate those images and I take the pictures with my phone and that's the way that I have figured out to have them come in not turned on an angle. So the next thing that I'm going to do, if this were for a quilt, for instance, I would double click on the group name and I would change that group name by double left clicking on it to log cabin, for instance, or whatever row it is. I want to audition patterns on this image, but at this point, I don't know what size it is. So I'm going to do Alt M and I am going to measure that image from one side to the other side, just straight through the middle. And you can see that it's tiny, and that's what my numbers indicate. I'm going to right click to close that. Now what happens if I take a pattern and I bring it in, I have to scroll out and I have to adjust the pattern and then I have to scroll back in. And that's just too much work. What I figured out is if I go to repeat patterns and I have upper left corner as my point type and I left click on the upper left corner, 
this brings in the block pattern as really large. But if I go right over here and I select the width and I right click to transfer the measurements and left click on the width measurement, it brings that pattern size down to the correct size of the image. And that's the way that I audition patterns. I may go right here and search for block and hit enter. And I can left click on this pattern. And as long as I have this setup box open, it's going to retain the size of that pattern and what that image needs to be. I can left click on this one and it will change it. Let's go down and pick this one and it changes to that. If I decide that I am auditioning one and I like the way that one looks, what I can do there is scroll out a little bit select this pattern and move it over to the side. Now I'm going to left click on the word again. I'm going to left click on that upper left corner again. It will bring in the same pattern, but I'm going to left click on a different pattern and that will bring a totally different pattern in. As long as I have this setup box open, then I can do that just as many times as I care to do it. So this is the way that I look at patterns and audition patterns for quilt blocks and for quilts before I ever go to the machine and stitch something out so that I have a plan to be able to get started with. Doesn't mean I'm not going to change that plan, but at least I've got something to get started on whenever I am working on something. So I hope that helps you a little bit. I'm going to hit OK. And now I can go on to my next block that I want to do. Thank you.